It seems like a strange place to start a month of prayer about the knowledge of God, of how to know Him, by talking about Him being incomprehensible, doesn't it? If you told me after you watched this short video that I was incomprehensible, I'd likely be offended. We as people want to be understood and known, and what others can't comprehend about us is often because we choose to not allow them to see it. It's hard for our culture today to even consider that anything could be incomprehensible or not fully knowable. If we have a desire to know, learn, or understand something, we all have the resources we need at our fingertips to learn and even master it if we wanted to, but not about God. When trying to wrap my mind around this truth that God is incomprehensible, it brought to mind a piece of my own story. You see, my husband Peyton and I recently experienced a miscarriage. We were early along in the pregnancy, but not so early that we didn't start planning for the baby and dreaming of all the baby could be, and definitely not so early that we didn't already love that baby so deeply. Now, my faith tells me that God could have saved our baby. God could have made it healthy and helped us along to full term, but he chose not to. Does this make God any less powerful or able to save? No, I don't believe it does. Does this make God any less good or loving? I don't think that's true either. But this attribute of God, his incomprehensibility, gives me hope, even now before I see how he will work even this for good, because it means that the God I know, love, and trust is the same God now as he has always been to me, even when it's harder for me to understand how that could be true. It also means that in Jesus' name, years from now, when I do get to see the good that he has created from the loss of our baby, I will sing his praises for even this. Because while we will never fully know God and his workings and attributes, we can trust that in which he has disclosed to us. That's not to say that I've perfectly trusted God through this with unfailing faithfulness. Our circumstance has led us to asking God really hard questions about who he is. I'm wondering today, what circumstance may have you questioning God's attributes? Maybe you're saying, how can God be good if fill in the blank? Or if God is loving, then why this? Me too. In the following days, we'll be diving into more attributes of God. But I believe that at the foundation of trusting that God is who he says he is, regardless of how we feel or what we face, is the requirement of a robust acknowledgement and affirmation of the incomprehensibility of God. When that happens, when we acknowledge God's attributes of being incomprehensible, we can respond in one of two ways. First, I think it's likely that we could respond by giving up altogether. If I can never fully know God, why would I try? But think with me for a moment and imagine if it was the opposite. What if we could understand why he does what he does? We understood all of who he was in his infinitude. We totally got it. Is that a God worth worshiping? Is that a God worth living for, worth trusting, worth following? Or would that make us the gods of our own lives? I feel so much safer knowing that there is a God so great, so unsearchable, and so unknowable that we can look up to the heavens and know that our God is so much bigger than our understanding, and yet that same God enters into our lives. I believe that a right response to acknowledging God's incomprehensibility is to truly, deeply worship Him for all that He is, even when we only know as much as He will disclose to us. So that's my challenge to you today. In light of God's incomprehensibility, in light of trust that his attributes are true even when we can't understand them. He is worthy of worship.